Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's another week, and we are happy to bring to you our show titled Speak of Africa. We have a whole lot of news for you, starting with La Republique du Cameroon, Ambazonia. We look at the newspaper headlines. We have so much news, but when we look at the news of today, as you know, we always put our news in a geopolitical context. How is our, the week? How is the world? Well, the major headline we see in the world is the triumph of people power in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is an island very, very close to India, just at the tip. That's where Sri Lanka is. Some of you may not know where Sri Lanka finds itself, but some of us who study geography, we know exactly where Sri Lanka is. So this is a country that has come to the fore. The country has gone bankrupt. It's the economy, stupid. That's a catchphrase popularized by former President Bill Clinton. And we think this phrase applies to a lot of African countries. So the news we're going to present to you today is going to focus more on the economy. Whenever we talk about the economy, business, some of you are not really happy. But you have to understand that our primary problem in Africa is the economy, money, the way of living, the cost of living. Our people are struggling to make a living, so that's paramount. Before you start looking at social issues, political issues, to make a living, the economy is stupid. That's what we need to focus attention on. And we're going to do this on this show. For the show of today, we want to give you information by using Sri Lanka as a subtext. Then we're going to go to Ambazonia. We'll show it to you. Then we'll take you to La Republic of Cameroon. We'll take you to Angola. We'll take you to Burkina Faso. We'll take you to Ghana. We'll take you to Niger. We'll take you to Nigeria. We'll take you to Rwanda. Then we'll end in South Africa. So we have a whole lot of news for you. Do not say, oh, we don't have enough news. We have a whole lot of news for you. We're not going to spend too much time talking about business because some of you guys are anti-business. But you have to understand, business is what feeds you. You have to eat. If you don't eat, how are you going to live? So don't be stupid. Business is very important. So that's the message we're sharing with some of our viewers who don't understand the importance of business. Look at what is happening in the world this week. When a country is going bankrupt, it's because most of the guys who are running these countries do not understand the rules of economics. You talk about balance of trade. You talk about balance of payments. Those are strange concepts to some of the people who rule a lot of the countries in Africa. But we want you to understand these concepts because that's what will really help our countries do better. Without further ado, let's thank our subscribers. Our numbers are going up. More people are subscribing to the show. We thank you very much for your confidence, for your trust. And we're also thanking the people who are watching. If you've not subscribed to Speak of Africa, please subscribe today. Tell your friends, if they've not subscribed to the show, let them subscribe today. Because this show is a movement. It's a new movement. We're focusing on economic issues. Later, we're going to move to social issues. Then we'll end with political issues. So we're following things step by step, which is why you have to be with us. How can we change Africa? we we'll begin by changing you, the guy who is watching the show. Once you watch the show, you gain the knowledge, then you can use this knowledge to change your country. That's our ambition. In order to change Africa, we we'll start with the guy in the mirror. Let him change his, his destiny, then he will change the destiny of his country. And that's how we are working. So let's also look at uh, our customers. We are having more and more customers. We're going to start by thanking Obra Pharmacy, Obra Pharmacy, if you need medication, this is a good place you can get medication. Obra Pharmacy, it all rhymes like Oprah, but it's Obra. It's founded by an African, and we want you to look at uh, the website of this company, then patronize them, patronize your people. That's what we need, patronize Africans. Then we also have QHR Pharmacy. This is a, a very dynamic uh, African business in Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada, okay? So patronize QHR Pharmacy. You see their website, go there, tell them you found them on Speak of Africa because we want to promote businesses. We are not just limited to just healthcare businesses, as some of you say. We have come up with a new website, patientparadise.com. Patientparadise.com is a way to give you information. 
Because in order for you to live well, your health needs to be important. We give you information so that you can have a way to check on treatments, diseases, doctors, all of this stuff, you will find it on patientparadise.com. We call it patientparadise.com because it's just like a paradise. If you're a patient, you go to this website, you'll find all the information. Your doctor doesn't need to give you this information. You can get this information on your own just by reading the articles on our website. And we made this website really easy. So anybody can have access to the website. You can take a look at it. We have a whole lot of information on it. And we're asking you to use this website, okay? Patientparadise.com. With the news of today, we're telling you that we're going to use Sri Lanka as the focus. People power. Sri Lanka shows you the triumph of people power. When the people are really ready to free themselves, the military cannot do much. All what the people need to do is to plan, organize, then go into the streets en masse so that they fill all the streets. The guys who are in the military will be powerless. They will not be able to shoot because there are just too many people. But when just a few people come out, they become targets of the military. You look at what is happening in Sri Lanka. The people have been protesting for months because of inflation, the high cost of goods, standard of living. But the president and the prime minister, who are from one family, were just happy to enjoy life. They didn't care about the people. So what is happening in Sri Lanka also obtains in most of the countries in Africa. And we're going to show this to you. Starting with Ambazonia, why are the people protesting? The people are protesting because Mr. Paul Beer has produced a form of normalization of death and war. It's like it's normal for people to die because every day all what people see is death, people dying. Ordinary citizens are shot by the police. They are shot by Paul Beer's talks. They are shot by Paul Beer's militia and nobody says anything about it. Initially, when the revolution started in 2016. People were thinking that, okay, the international community is going to intervene. No, the international community will not intervene because the lives of Africans or blacks does not matter. Just like you see, even Arabs, we, we show you videos. Arabs think Africans are not important. We were calling these Arabs, like from Morocco, Tunisia, we're calling them our brothers. But they don't treat us as brothers. You can see the video. We showed you a video last week. Today again, we're going to show you another video, the way Arabs maltreat Africans. Africans are leaving their countries because of bad governance. They are looking for greener pastures in Europe. They get to Morocco. Moroccans treat them as slaves. I'm going to show you a video of a young guy. Too many people send this video to me. When I watched this video, I cried. And I want every African young person to see this video. This is a video of a young person who is brutalized by an Arab. They are beating him with like a machete and a whip, and he's crying. He's falling on a chair. They tie him to the chair, and they are whipping him, whipping him, whipping him. So is this the cost of looking for a better life? So you ask fellow Africans, is it worth it leaving your country to go and look for a better life? Take a look at the video. In addition to this video about this young person, we also have another video, Tunisia, okay? You miss your flight, you're supposed to go to Senegal, you miss your flight. As a result, the Arabs start beating you. In plain sight, the police officers are right there, and they're not helping the African. So this is very sad when we look at the predicament of Africans. It's like we are the wretched of the earth. So do we want to accept our fate as the wretched of the earth? On this show, we're telling you no. This is why we are raising a level of perception. This is why we are raising a level of consciousness. Because we want you to rebel against your condition as a human being. Okay? This is what we call metaphysical rebellion. Rebel against your condition as a human being. Because this is not acceptable. We cannot be slaves forever. Let's become free people. Okay? So, you look at Ambazonia. The killing goes on. 
But what is happening? A few young folks were killed in Bafut. What happens? Field Marshal No Piri, he calls himself a foot soldier, No Piri. What he did this week is very, very dramatic. Very, very dramatic. If you know what we call drama, I don't want to go into details. It's just like, come and see. It's like a movie. In America, we call it a movie. What did Field Marshal No Piri do with his guys? They went to the barracks and killed the head of the barracks in Biame. They killed him. Before they went there, they took a coffin. They killed him and took his body and dumped it in this coffin. And you can see the way <laughs> they are displaying all of this. So it's like they televised everything for you to see. They took the coffin with them to the side, killed the guy. Then, interestingly, while they were still at the premises, some of the guy's uh, officers called to check on him. No Piri had the phone of this officer. Hello? He said, oh, this is uh, No Piri in Biame. I just killed your boss, and I have his cops. I'm taking the cops with, with me. You guys have been killing my people and taking the corpses with you, and we don't know where they, they've been buried. General Ivo and Ayeke, all the other generals, you killed them, and we never saw their bodies again. So we are retaliating. So it's very, very, very sad when you look at what has really happened. No pity has done it again. Sheshek no day. No pity life. No pity life. Now come on, I die, but it is Before unity warriors won't go for me today, they don't make it. Come on, I die, they go down. Because they will not say, come I will come back for town. Dead or alive. But he don't come. We'll catch him alive, but we'll not shoot him. We don't shoot him, kill him. Now come on about the army. I come with that. Now come with that for soldiers. Eh? For unity warriors, we'll have this We'll have this team. Now in that. No pity life. Unity warriors, life. Check, check what they... Unity warriors, life. Unity warriors of Bui, life! Una Christian! Na commander I come in that! Commander from the army brigade! Under the Republic! Yes, na so unity warrior, don't take him today! Una Christian! No pity life! Yes! No pity life! Na no pity, let's have to talk foot soldier, no pity! I'm just doing what I know how to do best! No pity life! Check, check, no day. I said no pity life! Check, check, the ladder of pig! I said I'll show you now! No me no pity! I said foot soldier, no pity, I'll show you now! Now commander, now ladder of pig commander, this from Biamiwa, don't kill him! Where well, unity warriors don't kill him! I said commander from Biami, they have no pity in hand! Now no pity life! Check, check, no day! Check, check, no day! I said check, check, no day! Life! Now commander, that from Biami, is a coven! Commander from Yamide is a coffin. I don't make a coffin go down. I said, no, no pity life. She shake no day. Na commander from Yamide is a coffin. Na commander from Yamide is a coffin. I said, no pity life. She shake day. No day. She shake day. No, no. She shake day. No day. She shake day. No, no. She shake day. She shake day. She shake day. I said, no commander this. Na no pity life. I said, I'll show you now. I said, I'll show you now. 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 I'll show you and the guy is saying, no period, we're going to come for you. No period is insulting them. So you know, mommy Pima. It is caution, fine. <laughs> so this was really a whole lot of drama, guys. Then you can also see no period and his guys taking these cops in a coffin, riding with these cops many distances away. Then people are asking me, Prince Ojong. So it means these people from La Republic are telling lies. If there were security in this part of the world, how can no Piri travel with a corpse for such a long distance without the police attacking him? Well, it's because 
the people in La Republic believe in telling lies. This show is to tell you the truth. Don't believe what La Republic is telling you. Believe what we are saying because we like to tell you the truth. No pity is doing this because there is a whole lot of lawlessness in that part of the world. The military will try to run around to look for no pity. It's like a cat and mouse game. No pity is too smart. He's a spirit. You, you come looking for a spirit, why are you going to see a spirit? Then when you leave, the spirit comes back and attacks. So the only way things can be resolved, as we've been saying, is to, to sue for peace. Peace, peace, peace. Militarization is going to fail. After 2016, you guys have seen a lot of killing. So many people are dying. Innocent lives are wasted. Don't you think it's smart to make peace, sit at the table, and ask for meaningful dialogue? Well, we've realized that even the powers that be, some of you guys sent us some tapes. We were listening to people in Mr. Bia's cabinet. They were quarreling among themselves. Oh, this war is going on because of you. You guys are making too much money. That's why the war is going on. So now they are beginning to quarrel among themselves because they've realized that they are losing and they are failing. So we predicted this more than four years ago, but nobody paid us any mind. They just thought, well, a bunch of unimportant guys who should listen to us. But we understand world politics. We know how things work. So we try to give advice. So if you listen to us, you do very well. If you don't, probably what happened in Sri Lanka would end up happening in Cameroon because the people are fed up. It's just like a balloon. It will burst at any time. People will be swimming in a swimming pool in a 2D very, very soon. Watch what we're telling you now. So in addition, you can also see that even Dr. Titus Ezua, one of the victims of Mr. Paul Bia's uh, dictatorship, Dr. Titus Ezua used to be a medical doctor of uh, Mr. Paul Bia, but when he showed some signs of being ambitious, Mr. Bia put him in jail for a very long time. The guy survived, and now he's telling his story, and he's still telling the truth, because the truth shall set him free. We have a video of Titus Ejua. Listen to the advice he's giving. The system is having this problem because of Mr. Bia handling things the wrong way. Okay? That's why we're having this Ambazonia crisis. Take a look at it. Then at the same time, too, you have another video of... Uh, Bas, Brigade Anti Sadina, which is a bunch of Bamliki guys, they are against the Bia regime. But interestingly, among the Bamlikis in La Republic du Cameroon, these guys are not fighting. They are just quiet. They are making their money. They are not fighting for any revolution. But the Bamliki guys in Europe want to make Mr. Maurice Camto president. They want to make him the third president of La Republic du Cameroon. How is it going to happen? They need to go on the ground and start fighting the way Anglophones are fighting. That's the only way they will be able to make Mr. Kamto president. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. Okay? And of course, there was a whole lot of floods. Floods. Floods everywhere. We had pictures of floods. And we feel sorry for most of the people who have really been affected by this flood. Mutengene, Tiko, Victoria. Then even in Yaoundé, Douala, you have the floods. Then we even saw floods also in Ivory Coast and even uh, Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria. So you have floods in a lot of places in Africa. We've had floods in South Africa, but some of the guys are explaining to us why we're having a lot of these floods. Okay? Climate change, then wrong forms of uh, rec land reclamation are affecting when it rains like this, the water breaks most of the banks, then it overflows. Flows, okay? From here now, we leave Ambazonia and La Republic of Cameroon, we go to Angola. Hey, yo, Shay, I thought you was going to take me to this place so I could get my taxes done. You know I'm trying to buy a new house. What's up? Let's get it on. If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince O'Jone, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the state, where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, back refunds. So come, get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing, no waiting. This man is amazing. The Prince. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131.
This week, we received news that uh, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, the former president of Angola, has died in Spain. The guy ruled Angola for a long time. It's an oil-rich country, but we've done a lot of shows focusing on Angola, and we've told you that it's a former Portuguese uh, colony, but Dos Santos has not really done his people well. Since he took over from Augustino Neto, he's not really uh, ruled the country properly. Angola has just become a clientelist institution where you have a government of thieves, a kleptocracy. The guy has enriched himself and, and given the money to his family and friends. Even after he left, his successor now is trying to probe his family, so things are not really going well. But when somebody dies in Africa, we don't like to talk bad about the death. So we want to say, may the soul of Dos Santos rest in peace. We move now to Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso has been having a whole lot of problems. The military was trying to evacuate civilians in certain areas so that they can fight the jihadists. But the problem with jihadists remains. Then you also have a whole lot of unsettled business. Thomas Sankara's uh, killer, Blaise Compaoré, has returned to the country because uh, the military junta invited him for a meeting of uh, reconciliation. We love reconciliation, but is this time to sweep the sins, the evil of Compare under the rock? It remains for the people of Burkina Faso to decide. We are just journalists. We just present the facts to you. Then we move to Ghana. Ghana is having a whole lot of problems. We said this last week. It looks like the government of Ghana is bankrupt. And when we say it's bankrupt, they are already looking for assistance again from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. And when a country is bankrupt, basically what it means is they don't really have money. In economic terms, you hear what they call the balance of trade and the balance of payments. These are just big jargon for, take for example, a balance of trade. It means that the exports are less than the imports. When a country is importing too much and exporting very little, then they have a deficit. They are owing too much. Similarly, the balance of payments have to do with the value of cash inflow and cash outflow. So much money is going out of Ghana than is coming in. So the people are broke. They don't have enough money to spend. And the government of Nana Akufo Addo is struggling. He's been doing a lot of things the wrong way not really following the laws of economics. And he hires mostly his relatives to run a lot of these positions. And that's why Ghana is in trouble. Next, we we'll move to Niger. Niger too is having a whole lot of issues with jihadists. It looks like the French have left Mali and now they are settling in Niger. Niger has a lot of minerals. So the French love African minerals. And this is why there's a lot of Francophobia in Africa. The Africans just hate the French. They just have this anti-French feeling. The French are stealing their resources. So they are just sick and tired. So even though the French have left Mali, they have gone out to Niger, the Africans are not happy there. So there's still jihadist activity. Even this week, there's a whole lot of rebellion going on in Niger. And you can see it. Next, we we'll take you to Nigeria. Well, the election is going on well, but the subtext of this election is what? We hear that Bola Tinebu has chosen Kashim Shetima as his running mate. Good. He has the money to buy all the delegates because in Nigeria it is stomach politics. It doesn't matter what your belief system is. You, you don't want to solve the problem of the country. You just say, it's my turn. I just want to run. They make you president because you have money. People like Peter Obi of the Labour Party who are actually coming up with proposals how to solve the problems of Nigeria. Nigeria has a lot of insecurity issues. This combines even with inflation and scarcity of food, high prices. What is happening now in Sri Lanka may eventually happen in Nigeria because as much as the Nigerians are spending too much time worrying about the next election, the people are hungry and they need to be fed. So you can bring them food during election time but they need to have electricity, water, at all times. But this is not happening. So you look, even Buhari, a few days ago, we're, we're told his convoy came under attack. That should show you the level of insecurity of the country. But the guy is not even paying attention to this. He just wanted to be president. 
So he's been president for two terms. Now he's ready to go. And he's just playing for time so that uh, Bola Tinubu can take over and continue the same mess. So both people are not really interested in solving Nigeria's problems. So are the people going to sit back and keep playing games with these uh, uh, jokers you call leaders? It's for Nigerians to decide. We are just journalists explaining what is happening in Nigeria. Next, we we'll move to Rwanda. Rwanda has really done well under Mr. Paul Kagame. And everybody is talking about uh, the miracle in Rwanda, how this country turned from a, a country dealing with genocide to a well-developed country in Africa. Everybody is proud of that. Even though, as we say, to every cloud, there's silver lining, OK? You see the, the minerals are slinging from Congo DRC. That's one dark element. The, the other dark element, too, is Paul Kagame has been there for too long. How long is he going to stay as president? The people are thinking that he's become a dictator and he's there for too long. Let another person also come and try. You cannot develop a country just alone, OK? Mr. Paul Kagame is running for a, a fourth term in office. Is this fair? The people of Rwanda don't think so. But who are, we don't have to say anything. We cannot say much. We are just journalists. So we leave Rwanda to Rwandans. We move now to South Africa. Finally, South Africa, we heard that there's a whole lot of uh, killing in Soweto. Okay, people will die because they were shot in Soweto, killing in Soweto, killing in Soweto. This is not the apartheid days. This is free South Africa, and we're still hearing trouble in Soweto. So Siri Ramaphosa needs to do something. He should not be sleeping. Otherwise, ANC will continue sleeping in the polls, and other political parties like Julius Malema's Economic Freedom uh, Fighters Party will rise and take over. And that's even our dream, because if they take over, they will make for a better Africa, not only South Africa. So we thank you very much for watching our show of today. And we're telling you that we're coming up with a lot more stuff. We're going to be doing a lot of training. We're going to be training you. We have our book, The Miraculous Millionaire. We're going to be working with this book. So even if you don't read, we can help you. So we're going to have two types of uh, customers. Service America and Business America. Service America will be helping you to shop for services in a smart way. Then Business America will be helping you to get into business the smart way. So just be, be watching our show. If you need to talk to me, call 240-350-1131. But meanwhile, do not forget about Buy Tech 97. Take the classes and do some IT. Bye-bye. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s, and the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiaHTC.com is built for HIPAA, Yes, magical one-screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e-prescribing, tight labs integration, multi-office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.